Arrives at the hometown of Lu Jia Liu at dusk on May the 31st, 2013. He's waiting anxiously with his rented truck at the street corner. The TV crew accompanies Lu and his team to Wuyang County, located some 400 kilometers away. Lu Jia Liu is the focus of this film. A professional harvester during the 80s, in 2002 he began traveling around the region to help with the wheat harvest in different districts. This time, crew leader Lu Jia Liu loads only three harvesters on his truck. One of them is his own, and the other two belong to Zhang Kun and his wife, who are from a neighboring village. Fierce competition has made him reluctant to take any chances this year. In the course of the journey, Lu Jia Liu receives another phone call from his friend, Mr. Yao. Early the next morning, the truck reaches the destination where Lu's contact, Mr. Yao, is waiting. Mr. Lu and his team separate, taking their harvesters to two neighboring villages. Lu and his two co-workers, father and son, Yua Shigong and Yua Xiaoyo, return to the Yao household where they will sleep and eat over the next few days, as they've done in previous years. Yao's responsibility as the local contact is to find work opportunities for Lu Jia Liu and organize room and board. For every plot of land, each harvester will pay five yuan to the contact as the established convention. Lu Jia Liu and his co-workers will be staying in an old room in the Yao household. The Jugs will stay at a coffin factory. When away from home, one has to make do with whatever is available. <laughs> After dinner, Lu Jia Liu gets straight to work and does a test run of the harvester on a nearby wheat field. Lu Jia Liu and Yu Xiaoyo take turns operating the harvester, while the 58-year-old Yu Shigong is responsible for keeping the accounts and other miscellaneous tasks. Lu Jia Liu and Yu Shigong are friends that have worked together for many years. Back home in Taichan County, the families meet regularly. Yu Shigong and his son often visit Lu Jia Liu's agricultural machinery station to eat and drink together. The station was established in 2009. Lu Jia Liu is well trusted by his superiors because he is intelligent and resourceful. He's always been fascinated with machinery, and when he acquired his first harvester in 2001, being an iron harvester was as much a hobby to him as it was a means to make a living. <laughs>
In previous years, agricultural machinery stations from different districts would collaborate, and harvesters working outside of their home district would not need to worry about finding enough work. This year, the sheer number of harvesters has made this prospect unmanageable. In the heat of the day, Lu Jia Liu and Yu Xiaoyo operate the harvester while Yu Xi Gong calculates the bills and collects payments. Keeping accurate books is a very important task. The wheat fields are all connected, but they're owned by different farms. The size of each area harvested and the name of the owner must be clearly recorded. Yu Shigong's greatest wish is to buy a house for his son Xiaoyo in the county town. The harvester has broken down, but fortunately Lu carries spare parts and the problem is solved. When the test run is finished, the harvest begins in earnest. Harvesters have to compete to cut large fields of wheat. They make short work of a field. There are more than a dozen harvesters already at work in the fields. Normally, the work here would take around seven days, but the situation today suggests it may not take very long at all. Yu Shigong does some calculations for the crew. Each harvester from another district will have incurred around 3,400 yuan in fees per day for vehicle and driver. After deductions for fuel, middlemen and other expenses, to make a profit, they must harvest 66 acres of land. Lu Jiangliu is constantly on the phone. Yesterday evening, Yao phoned to tell him that the 66 acres initially budgeted can't be guaranteed. Lu makes calls everywhere in the hope that they can move on elsewhere once they're finished here. To remain on schedule, the harvesters work late. The hum of the machinery is accompanied by twinkling lights as the harvesters press on through the night. Tired from the day's work, Yu Shigong and his son head back to rest while Lu Jia Liu stays with the vehicle. Another grueling day lies ahead. In the harsh summer heat, only the harvesters and their machines are hard at work. The villagers are pretty relaxed. For them, Lu Jia Liu and his harvester are familiar sights. Lu Jia Liu's sons are the two people he cares about most. Several years ago, his two sons joined him when he traveled away from home for work. This year, his eldest is working in Shanghai, while his younger son is housebound, having injured his foot in a car accident. The eldest son is impressive looking and intelligent. His parents love him dearly. A few years ago when he got married, Lu Jia Liu put together everything the family had to buy the newlywed couple a house in town. But when his second son got married, the family couldn't afford to buy another house. So Lu Jia Liu and his wife gave up the family home for them and moved to the agricultural machinery station. 
Both daughters-in-law are currently pregnant, and Lu Jialio has agreed with his second son that their child should be born in a house in town. While this promise to his son motivates Lu to keep going, it's also the source of intense financial pressure. If he can't earn enough money harvesting this year, there's no hope for his son's house. Lu Jia Liu is constantly on the phone looking for work, but his face suggests things aren't going smoothly. Farmers' lives have improved in recent years, and with government support, many locals have bought their own harvesters, driving fiercer competition. The Jiangs are in an even worse predicament. In just two days, all the land in the village has been harvested and there's no more work to be had. Jiang Kun and his wife borrowed money in order to buy their two harvesters. They won't even pay for themselves if the current situation continues. Lu Jia Liu has been busy phoning around. He asks Jiang Kun to wait for an update. Harvesters trying to do business outside their hometowns risk being mistreated from time to time. On the road, Lu Jia Liu's vehicle is flanked down by some locals. <laughs> Lu Jia Liu is reluctant. He calls in Yao to negotiate. In the end, Lu Jia Liu agrees to harvest the field. This is a small and uneven plot of land that they harvest at a loss. By the time they finish here, the large field they had an agreement over has already been harvested by someone else. Lu Jia Liu and the Yuas return to their rooms for a rest. Yu Shi Gong does some calculations. Over the last two days, they've harvested just over 33 acres of land, and it remains uncertain just how much land will be left for them to harvest tomorrow. Lu Jia Liu and his team had originally planned for an early start on the third day so as to get as much harvesting done as possible. They weren't expecting rain, and there's nothing they can do but wait. A cause for concern is that since no harvesting is able to be done during the rain, competitors might steal work from them elsewhere. The rain finally stops in the morning, and Lu Jia Liu and his team immediately make their way to the wheat fields ready to begin harvesting. But they've just begun harvesting when suddenly the machine jams. Everyone scrambles to help, but nobody can find the source of the problem. The rumble of other harvesters in the background makes them anxious to find a solution. An hour later, the object causing the jam has been removed. They get straight back to work. Jung Kun has still had no luck finding work. But then some locals tell him that there are lots of unharvested fields in a neighboring village and that he should get there quickly. 
Jung Kun phones Lu Jialio to inform him and makes preparations to set off the next morning. <laughs> the crew chats with the villagers and discovers some ambiguities in their story. In the evening, the team gathers and debates the situation. Lu Jiao Leo suspects that the villagers in question could be friends and family of local harvesters looking to get rid of Zhang Kuan to rid the area of competition. <laughs> <laughs> Zhang Kuan heeds Lu Jialio's warning and decides to stay. But while contemplating where to look to harvest next, Lu Jialio receives a phone call from home. The wheat there is nearly ready for harvesting. He decides to return home. After all, the income from harvesting in his hometown constitutes a significant proportion of his earnings. Early in the morning on day four, Lu Jialio and the U.S. say goodbye to Mr. Yao. Although they didn't make a profit, they insist on paying the middleman his fees. Mr. Yao refuses to accept the cash, and the pushing and pulling that ensues shows their deep sentiments. In the end, Lu Jialio manages to leave Yao with a contribution towards the room and board. Perhaps out of uncertainty as to whether he'll be back next year, Lu Jialio poses for a group photo with Yao and his family. Lu Jialio and his team wait at the highway on-ramp for their truck. And it's fast approaching noon before it finally shows up. But the driver refuses to go to Lu Jialio's village on the grounds he doesn't know the route. Lu Jialio realizes that the driver has probably received a better offer and wants to increase his price. Bearing in mind that the group haven't made any money on this trip, a rise in the truck fee would mean a further increase in total expenditure. Lu Jialio can't agree to an increased price, and eventually the truck leaves. In all the time that Lu's been a harvester, this is the first time he's been refused by a truck. Lu Jialio hastily calls other drivers, but it's the peak harvest period, and trucks are all but impossible to get hold of. While negotiations continue, evening begins to set in, and it looks as if they'll have to rough it tonight. They buy some alcohol and some food and sit by the roadside. <laughs> After a quiet night, in the morning, Lu Jialio continues his search for a truck, and eventually he finds one. But it won't be able to arrive before dusk. Shortly before noon, Jiang Kuen receives a phone call. The caller suggests another destination that he should go to for harvesting opportunities. This excites Jiang Kuen. But Lu Jialio begs him to come home before considering it. At least the wheat back home is guaranteed. Zhang Kuen is torn. And the heat, combined with Zhang Kuen's refusal to cooperate, is causing Lu Jialio to lose his temper. <laughs> The truck arrives at dusk. The three harvesters speed homeward, finally arriving at night.
The next day, they make an early start, driving their harvesters to the wheat fields where they begin harvesting. Lu Jia Leo has been in touch with his eldest son, hoping that he can come and help for a few days. His eldest son finally makes it home around noon, and after a quick change of clothes, he heads to the fields. With help from Yuan Jing, Lu Jia Liu is visibly more relaxed, giving instructions as his son drives the harvester. Yuan Jing is a courier in Shanghai. And although it's not a comfortable existence, he's determined to make it in the city. Lu Jia Liu is conflicted regarding his son's decision. He hopes he can make it big in the city, but at the same time, he wishes Yuan Jing could come home and work alongside him, just like the way his own father raised him and his brothers. Yuan Jing is a helpful companion, capable of both driving and fixing the harvester. As for Lu Jia Liu, he likes working with machinery and has no wish to leave. Different generations have different ideas and there are still some discussions to be had. Acres of local farms have been harvested, and it's a good yield. It'll go some way towards offsetting the deficit incurred on the recent trip. The down payment for Jiao Liu's younger son's house should now be possible. Finally, the harvest at home is over, and at last, Lu Jialio can have a decent night's sleep. He has fond memories of a few years earlier when he would lead impressive convoys of several dozen harvesters to the fields. Thank you.